get on here. All right, we're going live, Able Outdoors Podcast. I'm with my buddy, my new friend, Chad Huey from Alabama. What's up, buddy? How y'all doing? And uh, we're, what I met Chad not too long ago, and we, you know, we, of course we start talking hunting and fishing, and he is uh, come to find out he completed his turkey slam after being injured a couple years ago, a couple, three years ago already. Uh, it's been two and a half years, so I guess I'm what y'all would might would call a newbie to the, to the world. But uh, a newbie, yeah. yeah. October the fourth of nineteen, a car accident's what what uh, did me. I'm the same level injury, I believe, as you, Chad. That's I'm right. C seven uh, complete. C seven. So I know exactly what kind of equipment you need to do whatever you want to do. That's it. Yes, sir. Well, tell me about. I, I'm guessing you always you were planning on completing your slam, and then and then SCI kind of got in the way for a little while. It delayed it a little bit. Yeah, I've uh, I was able to do uh, the Eastern so uh, a lot of times, and then I, I killed my Miriams, killed a bunch of Rios, and the Osceola was the, the last one on my list. And tell me about the Miriams. Where'd you go for that? I went to the Sand Hills of Nebraska. Okay region that's been a few years ago and uh killed two miriams there and uh, you know they're they're a lot easier to call than the easterns are i will say that and the rios are as well i don't Uh, think they're hunting i had had a ball doing it and i'm actually looking to go uh redo this with my injury now to be in a chair and do my slam again i'm uh fortunate enough i'm getting to go to texas uh here in the next week uh at the end of their season, uh, the county I'm hunting doesn't end on May 15th, but to get another Rio, hopefully, and then a good friend of mine that I've met uh, is going to turn me on to a Miriam hunt in Wyoming for okay. next year. Okay. And so we'll we'll hopefully uh, complete the slam again uh, post injury, which will mean a lot to me. Are you uh, are you are you full body mounting each one? Or are we talking just fans and fans? no? I'm, I'm getting. Uh, I had a, a shadow box of the Osceola uh, yeah. mounted, and the one I killed last year. And I just got back a few weeks. Well, it's been three weeks ago, I guess now, and uh, killed another Osceola, and it was a boss. It was a very mature bird. I've sent you pictures of it, but. I posted them up. It, it's a beautiful bird too, but yeah, it's it hard was, not to mount that one. Yeah, that one I left it there. I'm gonna get that one full body for sure. Oh and, yeah, uh, that that one was one that deserves to be a full body mount. Uh, ten and a half inch beard, but the 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 spurs on it, um, biggest spurs I've ever killed on turkey by far. So okay, we're talking turkey grand slam. Is the Goulds part of the slam, or are there two different kinds? Well. Uh, the outfitter I hunt with in Florida is a good friend of mine, and I've taken him deer hunting on a, a ranch I get to hunt in North Texas. The Wagner Ranch, I know you're familiar with, it's the largest continuous ranch in the United States, 530,000 acres in, in one place. block. The King Ranch is bigger, but all this is under under one fence. Right. Um, and it, it's pretty special. I don't think you can get in now if you're not already in. They do 60 hunts a year. And five years ago, I guess, was my first year to hunt. I've hunted there every year except for the year I was in the hospital for my accident. I didn't get to go, but I've been twice since I've been out of the hospital and I've killed uh, a really nice uh, high 30s management 10 point. And this past year I killed uh, a 171, six by six typical that had 27 and a half inch main beams and just a a gorgeous deer and I've been so fortunate. But yeah, the guy in Florida uh, is going to do a, a Google's hunt in Mexico next year. And we're talking about it. Uh, if it's possible for me to go and all things are possible still, I do right. believe that, that, that maybe I can make that trip. So is that, is that there's five, right? In the grand slam or are you, or is well, that the North America? Well, the, that's uh so you're talking the about the slam, I completed my, my slam of the four, the right. Miriam Rio Eastern Osceola. Okay. Uh, I think they call it the world slam when you kill your oscillated. That so, oscillated and then you got to add the ghouls on there too. Oh yeah. You got to go. Yeah. Yeah. Right. There's always something still. Right. So that, 
that oscillator one is gorgeous. That 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 would be an oh, epic trip. He just mounted a picture of that os- of an oscillator. I'll send you later. And that is, they have huge spurs. It's the most beautiful turkey. But unlike other turkeys, uh, he said they don't really respond to calling or decoys. Right. Uh, you pretty much gotta kind of gotta stalk them. They shoot them out of the, the tree. I think. They shoot them out of the trees. Well, they 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 probably did. Yeah. But he he said it's uh. It's a fun hunt to go on, and it's just getting there. And uh, with all that we face, you know, being uh, oh, yeah. in our positions, but you're just going to have a little extra help. It's still possible. I don't think anyone in a chair that I know of has ever hunted or taken one, so that would be pretty wow. Cool. Boy, I would love to be. Wouldn't that probably be? Not the, probably not the first, but uh, yeah, that that that's that's going to motivate me to do it even that's, more. Uh, that may be the end of our both of our slams someday. We may have to go down there together. Let's do and it. Film it. Let's do it. That would be pretty sweet. So we'll uh, we'll get we'll get on that that Osceola one and start start back again. Well, man, I've, I've always been a hunter. That's kind of been my thing for a lot of years. I, I'm a state farm agent here in North Alabama in the town of Hartsell, uh, but. Uh, hunting has kind of always been my thing and I've been fortunate to be able to go uh, pre-injury. I've, I've been to the Yukon a couple times and killed good moose and uh, been out west. Uh, never have killed a mule deer with anything but my bow, uh, but I've done that several times and killed antelope and uh, I've got a good friend in Kansas I've killed uh, some pretty good deer with and always enjoyed hunting, but now since my injury things have started over. My first hunt, if you don't mind me, I want to tell you this story, Chad. Uh, I've not shared this with you before, I don't think, but my first hunt, uh, January a year ago, uh, here at my house in North Alabama, I've got a little bit of land and got a green field out beside my house and a little fish pond, but we had some deer coming in and I carried, uh, at the time, um, my 11 year old son and it was his first buck using my crossbow. The first deer that came out into our little plot was a nice six point and I let him shoot it. And he and I hugged and high fived and shared memories. And it, it was just, I was just so thankful uh, to God because he's kept me around and I, I still get to raise my kids. I've got three kids and uh, a wonderful wife and that I still get to go do stuff. But that was my very first time to get to go on in January, two years ago, uh, in my own yard with my son and oh. him kill his first buck. He had killed a couple of those prior to that. I was just you, know, ask you, you, you can imagine that's, that was pretty, pretty proud dad moment there. Yeah. I, I was just going to ask you about how you, if you were injured in October, how did, when did, how did you get back into it and how soon? Well, I was assuming I got home in October when I, after I got injured, so the season's already going on. Yeah, yeah. Well, my my, I, I was actually scheduled to leave. I was injured in a car wreck in Birmingham. A guy rear-ended me and stopped traffic, doing seventy miles an hour, and I ended up spending forty-nine days in the ICU at UAB and on life support and all that stuff, and uh, ended up seven months before I was able to come to my house. Okay. And, but the whole time the therapist told me everything that I talked about was I will hunt again, I will hunt again, I will hunt again. And so that's that was kind of what my love of the outdoors and hunting uh, was kind of what I used to drive me uh, along with wanting to be there for my family, of course, first and foremost, but that I wanted to be able to hunt again, however it was going to happen. That was a big drive for me personally. So that so seven months you got home kind of in the summertime then yeah yeah and uh, how'd you prepare for that first season anything well special you know um, I still do uh, some physical therapy uh, just to kind of help me with range of motion and working out and and I'm a big guy you can probably tell that on the on the, the feed here but a big man I happen to learn how to watch what I eat and trying to maintain a, a healthy weight level and I'm still right. struggling with that some, but to lose some, some poundage, but, uh, I've got a gym in my garage with a, a rickshaw machine that I can back up into and 
work those triceps, you know, to do transfers. Oh, yeah. And uh, a curl bar, and, and I've got an arm bite that I can sit behind and, and work at, too. So I did a lot of that, and uh, I'm not pulling the weight on my bow that I used to, but I've been able to, to get back into archery a little bit. I did buy a crossbow also, uh, which I love that, but um, it's just taking some time, but uh, it's helping me give give focus and and to want to get back into the outdoors and hunting has been a real big factor in my recovery. And that and learning to drive with hand controls again Oh yeah. To allow me, to, I'm still able to work. My business is still open. I'm at work right now. And that's something I would just tell anybody, you know, find something that motivates you and, and just don't give up. Chad, we've talked about this. You've been an inspiration to me and, and I know you've been injured a long time, but uh, there's probably countless people you've talked with and you've helped inspire. And uh, I'd like to go on the record just saying thanks to you. And <laughs> we developed a friendship through our support group on Facebook. And now we're talking on a podcast. How about okay. that? I appreciate it, buddy. And man, I'm, I'm, I love seeing guys like you that are, you know, newly newbies that are, you know, have, have the heart and the drive, just like, man, it reminds me of 35 years ago when, when I was tr trying to figure out how to get back out again. And it's the best therapy out there, buddy. Yeah. You know it. And, Amen. And, yes, sir. For you, you got kids to bring up in that tradition, so yeah, you, you got some guiding to do yet. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, I, uh, my my problem now is that uh, my middle son he likes to hear the gun go pow too much. We we have to work on the conservation side a little bit more with him. Uh, well, he's kind of like I was at that age. He thinks every buck's a good buck to shoot. It's eligible. Let's kill it, Danny. You know. And my oldest one has now learned. He's been around me enough that. Uh, He'll look at a deer and go, do you think that was old enough that we can shoot that? I'm like, well, I, I think if you want to shoot him, yeah, I think that was okay. So I'm proud of all of them, but uh, uh, the middle one, I may have to start a GoFundMe to buy some more ammunition for. He runs a trap line at my house, catches all the coons and uh, possums and stuff like that, oh, yeah. and is into it. And uh, he's actually kind of mad with me now that I'm not taking him. Uh, on this Rio hunt I'm going on coming up next week in Texas, but you know, he has school and has other things going and, and, and mom didn't think it was the best idea for him to go off with me this time. Well, you're going to have to bring him over for dove season one weekend. He'll get plenty of action then. Yeah. Yeah. Plenty. We, we, we took him dove hunting this year, uh, here close to my house. A friend of mine had a, had a good field and, and, uh, the kids were the main focus for everybody, not just me, but yeah. both my boys were able to shoot. I think they they shot four and a half boxes of shells, oh, Chad. Yeah. And oh, I yeah. believe I believe we had four doves. <laughs> but you know what? They got to shoot, uh, and there's no such thing as a bird too high, is what I think they've decided. They're going to try it and shoot it. But yeah. that's what I remember doing at that age, how much fun going dove hunting and stuff. and. And as long as they're wanting to go with dad and love to shoot, then uh, I'm going to keep buying shells for them. Keep, keeps them off the streets, buddy. That's, That's a good, true. Yes, good place to grow up. You know that. That's where we did it. Yeah. I, I, I know when you told me about spending so much time in ICU, I was asking you about uh, your skin and pressure sores because I know a lot of people have trouble yeah. with it right away. Did, did you have the same experience? Man, I, I, I did. I'm so thankful for the care I got. But uh, after spending so much time in the hospital, I will tell you that if you have a loved one in the hospital, be sure you check on them. Uh, there was a time when I, I couldn't do much and I was having to lay flat after the, the surgery to repair my spine that uh, at night shift especially would not turn me. And I developed a pressure sore on, on my bottom Mm. Ended up becoming a stage four pressure sore. And I know there's a lot of us that struggle with this. For sure. uh, I ended up having a wound back for a, a, a period of time, and that didn't help. And I finally had to have the surgery, uh, uh, a graft and a skin flap surgery to repair that. And uh, I was so thankful. This because COVID happened while I was in the hospital as well. But I was able to get my surgery just prior to the outbreak of COVID in Alabama. Uh, so that would have been 
I guess, early March. Right, right. Maybe. Uh, the first case of COVID at a nursing, a skilled nursing facility in Alabama was at the facility they were putting me in. That year? Because I had to leave UAB because of the pressure sore. Yeah. And the first case happened at the place I was at. But no, I had the surgery and that was, I'm just so thankful I got that. And as we all live with, and I'm sure you do too, that especially me being a big guy, that I have to constantly check and be sure if I see something that we catch it early on and not let it grow into a bigger problem. Well, I know it keeps you, it, that's, that's one of the reasons probably you were laid up for so long too, right? Yeah, that, that was part of, I would have been home a few months earlier, I think, because uh, I was far enough along with my rehab that uh, I could have been cleared, but then this set me back, uh, you know, at least two and a half months. And then I was able to go to another um, rehab facility for about three more weeks before I was able to come home. All right. Well, I know you, I know you'd like to travel and hunt. You're on your way like tomorrow. So how, I am, man. How, how do you handle having a wound like that? And how do you take care of it now? Cause I know you have to be extra careful. Like I say, uh, daily skin checks, uh, being on top of it. And I found a cushion that uh, when I talked with you earlier, you were not even aware of it, but it's uh, called Ease Cushion, E-A-S-E -E Cushion. I think it's easecushion.com, their website. I've sent a link to you. Hopefully you can share with our brothers and sisters out there. I'll, that I'll definitely post it up. This cushion, unlike a Rojo or other cushions, which are not bad, I'm not saying that, but this cushion runs off of a lithium battery and it has chambers in rows so that every two minutes one of them will inflate and one of them will deflate so every two minutes it's moving that tissue and getting blood flow to to my my lower area there and uh i've not had even an indication of a pressure sore in the last 18 months since i found this cushion and uh, they are expensive, like everything we buy, you know, it's just sky high and overpriced. And I'm not sure what insurance would cover for someone. But if you uh, if you would take a look into it, they're they're out of Michigan, I believe. And uh, great customer service. They care about people. And if you're looking for a new cushion, they make different models. Uh, they've even got one that can sit in a normal like like in a, if you're riding in a vehicle. Right. Go in the chair underneath you and you can take it on trips that way. And uh, then the ones like I have uh, strap into my, my power. I, I'm in a power chair and I put a battery in. It lasts a couple days. You know, we cut it off at night when I'm back in the bed. And then uh, it's it's just been I can't tell you enough good things about this cushion. And no, I'm not paid or anything like that. <laughs> yeah. Just like all of us do, we just try to help each other. Right. That's what I love about our community that, you know, we can be very honest and talk to each other and share stuff about, you know, whether it's, you know, doing your, your bowel program every day or what catheters and, and what cushions, what chairs. And, uh, you know, I've learned so much from y'all, uh, you and others that share about, you know, what works and shoot and rest and stuff when you get outside and how to fish from a wheelchair, just different things. So I think anything we can do just to keep supporting each other uh, it is is all good stuff and positive. And I'm so thankful we, we have a uh, a group that I was able to find um, that, through someone else that we can share stories with. One of the good one of the good things about social media right there, to be able to find other people that are before they get yeah. lost or slip through the cracks. I'll tell you what, that just knowing that I wasn't the only one, uh, I had a guy come to, I was at Spain rehab at UAB for a while. And I remember the first guy I met, we are still friends to this day. He's a big deer hunter. Uh, and he had a, had a freak injury and he's a, a T, T level, lower level, uh, can do a lot more, but him yeah. kind of like you do. He just kind of inspired me and just says, you know, don't get comfortable, keep fighting, keep pushing. And, uh, He's come to visit me a few times, and then I've been allowed to go back and speak to some people at Spain Rehab, and, and I feel like that's my duty to to try to just give others that, hey, 
when it first happens, you know how that is. When it first happens, you're yeah. you, you're kind of lost for a little while, but then oh, you yeah. figure out you still have a life and you still have purpose, and and we can get back to doing things that we love to do. It may be a little different, but thank God we still get to do it. That's that's one thing I can already tell just by talking to you a short time that you you gonna you gonna be all right. I don't have to worry about you. But, well, I hope not. I, I I'll be on you. Know, there are days when you you can get. You don't have such good days, but you try to get out of that funk pretty quick. Because that doesn't do you any good. It's not going to change the situation. And um, you, get, you get back on something positive. You talk to people like yourself and others, and and, and you get back to, to to worrying about getting better and thinking about your next hunt or your next fishing trip or whatever. Yeah, amen. So, amen to that. Yes, sir. Well, I'm going to put that link up for that for that seating technology I, I think it's kind of new i've heard of a couple of different kind but man i for me i want to i want to get that one that would go in a vehicle seat or yeah like a plane you can take it with on a long plane ride something yeah, like that. i, I want to say that one's around a little over 300 um yeah, that's not the bad one, the one i have now i'll just go into i think it's around three thousand. Wow. but it runs on a battery and yeah. they make quality products they stand behind them and the big thing for me is the customer support. That if you've got questions or you got a problem, I, I've never had an issue when I've called them. So. Man, well, man, I have enjoyed it, and I know we're going to do some more podcasts, and we're going to get together and hunt and fish sometime in the future. We, and we're going to go. We're going to go start another new Grand Slam together, right? We're going to get on. That's it, Chad. Podcast. Let's you and I do that. Let's make it a point too. So. It, it's going to happen, buddy. Well, I appreciate you having me on today, and uh, uh, this is this is good for me just to to be able to talk about you know kind of my life now. And uh, I've watched your podcast, and they inspire me. And uh, thanks for putting up with me today. Hey, buddy, have, I I know you're coming to Texas to hunt. Have a good hunt, and keep me posted. I sure will. Thank you, Chad. All right, buddy. Take care.